Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the number of working days between two dates, excluding weekends and bank holidays. Let's start off here. And the function you want to use is network days. It has three arguments, start date, end date, and holidays. Holidays is in square brackets, and that means it's a non-mandatory argument. We will include holidays. I've got a list of bank holidays here. So my start date is here, end date is here, and my holidays are over here. If I close the bracket, press enter, you can see I get two working days. That will be the Thursday and the Monday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are non-working. Saturday and Sunday is automatically excluded when you use network days. But the Friday I've got over here as a bank holiday, which is why that's not counted. In order for me to copy this formula down to the next row, I do need to fix this reference. So if I select it and press F4 on my keyboard, press enter, I can then copy down this formula. And you can see there's 191 working days between these two dates. Now, concerning your bank holidays list, if you are going to revise this list, add to it, it's a good idea to convert it to an Excel table. Otherwise, your formula won't pick up any new entries. To do that, just click somewhere in the bank holidays list, go up to the insert tab on your ribbon, go to the table button. This dialog box just confirms the range of cells that are being included in your table. And you have this option here to specify whether you already have headers. Click on OK. You can name the table. You get this extra design tab on your ribbon. And over here, we can name it. We call it bank underscore holidays. Can't have spaces in names. Now in this formula, instead of referring to that range with cells as you normally would, I can just type in bank holidays and it comes up in the intelligence list. I don't need dollars if I'm using a name. Copy it down and you see it works. If I was to add a further date, let's pretend that Thursday was a non-working day. So 31st of the 12th, 2020. The dates don't have to be in ascending order or descending order. You can see that I now only have one working day. I'll undo that because I don't want to include that date in the table. What if I want to count the number of working days if Sunday is my only non-working day? Well, network days won't allow you to do that, but there's this associated function called Network Days International, and that has an additional argument called Weekend. First two arguments are the same, start date and end date. And the Weekend gives you a list of non-working days. So if you want to specify that Sunday is your only non-working day, you would double click there and it puts 11 in the formula for you, comma, and then your holidays. Well, you can just type bank holidays in, close the bracket, press enter. And I get three working days because now the Thursday is a working day, the Saturday is a working day, and the Monday is a working day. If I copy this down, you see I get a lot more working days in this period as well. Next, I want to calculate the number of working days between these dates where Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are non-working days. And I can use Network Days International to do that. Start date, end date. And in the weekend argument, if I look down this list, there isn't an option for three non-working days, but I can use this trick. I open up quotation marks and I'm gonna specify one for a non-working day and zero for a working day. And what you do is you put in a one or a zero for each day of the week, starting with Monday. I want Monday to be a non-working day, so I put in a one, then I put in a zero for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then I put in two ones for Saturday and Sunday. Close the quotation mark, comma, and then holidays is, as usual, bank holidays. Close the bracket, press enter, and it returns one working day. The one working day will be the Thursday. Friday is a bank holiday, Saturday and Sunday are non-working days, and Monday is also a non-working day. I copy this down, so do that calculation between these two dates. If I wanted to calculate the number of Fridays between two dates, 
I could use a similar method, network days international, start date, comma, end date, and weekend. Now I use the same trick, I would say, one for Monday, one for Tuesday, one for Wednesday, Thursday, a zero for Friday, and two ones for Saturday and Sunday. Those are the quotation marks. And if I don't include the bank holidays, you'll see that I get a one, because there's one Friday between those two dates. But if I do include the bank holidays, then I get a zero, because that Friday is a bank holiday. Copy this down. And I'll do the same calculation between these two dates. Lastly, I want to show you how to work out the current number of days left until an end date. This calculation needs to update on a daily basis, determining how many days left there are until our end date. I won't do that calculation for our first example because I'm currently beyond the 4th of January 2021, but I can do it for the second calculation network days, although I could use Network Days International if I needed to. The start date, in this instance, we're going to use the today function because that always returns the current date. So the start date's always the current date. The end date will be the end date here. And also, optionally, we can include bank holidays. Close the bracket, press enter. There's 84 days left until our end date at the moment. Tomorrow, when I open up this file, tomorrow will be a Friday. It will calculate that there are 83 days left to our end date. 83 or working days. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful. Please subscribe if you have, and I'll see you next video.